This is the week that was for Monday, January 20th, 2014, brought to you by SwimOutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. The Arena Grand Prix was the biggest meet of the past week, but it didn't produce the biggest headline. We're looking back at the top swimming-related headlines of the past few days, which include some fast swimming and some shocking news. Let's get started with number five. Taking the number five spot on the countdown is Chase Kalish's reinstatement to competition at the University of Georgia after a two-week suspension for undisclosed academic issues. This isn't the first time the World Championship medalist has experienced problems with academics. He had to wait until this time last year to start at the University of Georgia after he, after he discovered he was missing some required credits to graduate from high school. The wait was worth it, though, as he won the 400 IM at the NCAA Championships. Kalish will likely be stepping up to race in Saturday's home dual meet against Tennessee. And one person who will probably not be on deck for that dual meet is head coach Jack Bowerly, who is still serving a suspension regarding these academic issues. We've learned that Bowerly is still coaching the team, but is not allowed to be on deck during the meets. If the Bulldogs win this weekend, Bowerly still gets the wins added to his count that reached 500 and 501 on the day the suspension was announced. We go to South Africa for number four on this week's countdown and the news that Cameron Vanderberg wants to add the 200 breaststroke to his competition program. This is not the first time Vanderberg has hinted that he wants to do the 200 breast internationally, but it appears he is serious about it this time. Vanderberg won the 100 breast at the 2012 Olympics and has never swum the 200 at the Olympics or World Championships. But he told Eyewitness News that he's putting in the training for the 200 breast this year to quote, have myself a double chance of getting medals, end quote, in 2016. With the best in the world routinely breaking 210, Vanderberg has his work cut out for him, not only because he is untested in the event, but because the few 200 breaststroke times we could find for him are in the 213 to 214 range. But he's got a couple of years until Rio, so anything is possible, and it would certainly make for an interesting story if he can put up an Olympic double in the breaststrokes to put him in the same category as Kosuke Kitajima and Domenico Fioravanti, the only men to do so. <laughs> National age group records continue to fall at an alarming rate here in the United States, and you can add five to that list. And that's what brings us to number three on our countdown. Michael Andrew took down three long course national age group records in the 13 to 14 age group last weekend at the Austin Grand Prix, one of which had been around for 20 years. He started with a 2319 in the 50 free to break his own mark by 19 hundredths of a second. The next day he swam a 5738 in the 100 back, beating Benjamin Ho's record by just one hundredth of a second. I would say he saved his best for last, swimming an incredible 10383 in the 100 breast. The time shattered a 20-year-old record of 104.74 swum by Anthony, Anthony Robinson by almost a full second. In the 11-12 to 12 age group, Destin Lasco got two records of his own at the Massachusetts Elite Short Course Yards meet. He started on Saturday with a 25.02 in the 50 backstroke to beat Seth Beer's record of 25.14, then was back the next day with a 53.54 in the 100 back to break his own record by a half second. We saw an alarmingly high number of national age group records fall by the wayside in 2013, and even though we are just three weeks into 2014, it would appear that trend is still going to continue. We come back to the Arena Grand Prix for the number two headline on our countdown of the top swimming stories of the week. Tyler Clary announced on Instagram of all places that he aggravated a recent back injury while swimming in Austin and had to withdraw from the meet. I spoke with Clary and he told me the pain came during the 200 back prelims, which forced him to miss out on a chance to win not only that event in finals, but the 400 IM as well. Clary is now the second high profile athlete to need some serious injury rehab before the summer nationals. Ryan Lochte appears to be on the mend and is expected to race next month. We hope Tyler's recovery gets him back in the on the blocks very soon. <laughs> And now it's time for the top headline of the week, and it comes from Russia, where breaststroke world champion Yulia Efimova has tested positive for high levels of a drug. I'm going to try to get correct. Dehydropiandrosterone, a drug that is produced naturally in the body, but is given medicinally as well. The Russian Federation is not confirming or denying that Efimova's A sample from an out-of-competition random drug test did contain high levels of DHEA, only to admonish the metals for 
admonish the media, that is, for breaking the story in the first place. FMOVA, FMOVA is not in any danger, at least at the moment. Bans and suspensions are not handed out until the athlete's B sample is tested. It's not known how long FMOVA's ban would last if that B sample does come back positive for DHEA, but what is pretty much assured is that since the samples were taken in October, everything she's done since then would be deemed invalid, including the 200 breast world record she swam at the European Short Course Worlds, the 50 breast world record she set in November, and the thousands of dollars she won in the FINA World Cup. It's never a happy day here at Swimming World when news comes out of any athlete testing positive, and it's especially saddening that it's happening to Yulia. We've been following her progress in the pool for many, many years, and we were honored when she visited our offices here two years ago. We'll keep you up to date as this situation develops. That's going to do it for this edition of The Week That Was. Thanks so much for joining me to look back at another exciting week. I'll be back next Monday to let you know what I think were the top headline grabbers of these next seven days. I'm Jeff Cummings, and that was The Week That Was. Thank you.